Hey, I'm back with the Civic. Now, we had a slight change of plans since uh, doing the throttle body upgrade last time. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is uh, pull the intake manifold back off and um, show you what I got lined up. He decided to go ahead and do an intake manifold upgrade. So I got a few different ones here. And I'll go through them and show you which one we chose and why we chose now, it. Pulling the intake manifold isn't difficult at all, especially since right now the car hasn't run, so there's no coolant in it, so it doesn't even make a mess. All it is is the 12s. Use, I use a 12 millimeter wrench across the top, 12 on the extension, get the ones across the bottom, pull all those off, disconnect the coolant hoses, and the manifold pops right back off. Now I've got the intake manifold off and completely stripped down, uh, which of course pull the studs out that hold the fuel rail, the spacers, uh, these are the fuel rail bolts, the IET sensor, the um, washers or grommets for the injectors, got the injectors back out and I'm using the ID uh, plug and play clips for those, fuel rail throttle body and um, auto air control valve. I'll go ahead and get the other manifolds out and show you uh, a quick rundown of options you have for intake manifolds and why I chose the one I chose to go with. Now I've got the intake manifolds in front of me. I just want to give you a quick disclaimer. The information I give you is more so based off what I've uh, the conclusions I've come to over the years using the different manifolds. Um, a lot of people will may struggle to pick an intake manifold based off, they usually base it off, I want to make X amount of horsepower. And they overlook the fact that a lot of this has to, it all has to work together well. You know, it all works as a big pump, especially when you're going forced induction. So you base the intake manifold off the overall goals and matching other components, not so much just off a of power number. So I'm going to run down, run down these manifolds. I got the, and they're all popular, super popular. The Edelbrock Victor X is a really good street and race manifold. We got the um, Skunk 2 Ultra Race, the Skunk 2 Ultra Street, the uh, Skunk 2 Pro Series, and a Golden Eagle Race manifold, which is exactly what it what it says. And I'll show you the difference between the manifolds. I'll start off with the three manifolds that I'm, you know that really weren't in the running that I'm not going to use. Uh, these are all bigger volume, uh, more so race applications. Uh, Edelbrock Victor X is probably the closest to being usable for this type of application. Uh, and you'll see all three of these are short runner, big plenum, higher volume. Uh, so they'll work better on larger turbo applications where you have to move more air, you know, in short. The Edelbrock is the only one that reuses the ICV location. Reuses the stock IET sensor, big port for the um, brake booster, and it also gives you the other ports to run vacuums off of. So, and this, like this other Skunk 2 that I will be using, has the, uh, I think it's 74 millimeter, opening for the throttle body, which is more ideal for a street application. The Golden Eagle and the Ultra Race, both race applications. These are both uh, 90 millimeter throttle body provisions to move a lot of air. Uh, actually, this Golden Eagle is larger than the normal one you would get. It has a bigger plenum. This will be going on another build I'm gonna do here uh, shortly. And the Ultra Race, between these two, I mean, they're both nice. I'm partial to the Golden Eagle because the Ultra Race, ideally, in my opinion, to take full advantage of these, you A, need to add more spacers. You know, it's tunable for what you want to do. But more importantly than that, you need to port them, which you are investing more money in porting it. The, skunk, uh, the Golden Eagle already has a velocity stacks inside, doesn't need any porting. You out the box, put it on the car, you're good to go. Like I said, tunable, 
skunk two out the box and even when you can get the you can tune these by requesting plenum size you just don't have to do anything to them once you get them which is in my opinion great neither one of these use um, the stock IECV ports the Golden Eagle and they all do the same thing with the um, vacuum ports they centered on here you can you know tap whatever you need to tap for it the skunk 2 is the same way I'll show you the back of the skunk 2 real quick and I guess another good thing on the skunk 2 it has provisions if you want to run 8 injectors you can run 8 injectors and I can see on this one they've already I had this problem with a lot of them actually all of them up until now I didn't even notice this the other skunk 2's Ultra Street and Ultra Race out the box before, I'm assuming before they made this particular one. Every time I installed one, I would have to go and shave down this portion of the intake manifold uh, because once you put them on, it would not clear the water pipe. I'll show you on the Ultra Street I have here. Uh, so I'm assuming they have taken care of that now by, um, by doing that. So it looks like they shaved it after they powder coated it. Okay, now to the other two. We've got the Skunk 2 Pro Series and the Skunk 2 Ultra Street, which right now is probably one of the most popular ones. Uh, and for good measure, the stock V16 that I pulled off looks dirty, but it's just corrosion. It's not actually dirty. Um, I'm going to use the Pro Series on this particular build instead of the street, uh, Ultra Street. Uh, I guess one of the pros to Ultra Street is, again, you can take it apart and you can have it ported internally. To, you know to flow better uh, it gives you the longer runners small plenum or not really small it's no smaller than the factory but the runners are slightly longer and I guess to accommodate for the slightly longer runners they take they took the throttle body and pitched it to 15 degrees you know for better clearance which in this case I've already made the intercooler piping so I would have to modify the intercooler piping to uh, work with this throttle body position um, I used to sell cold shot charge pipe sets built specifically for this because it does change the pitch and the length of the upper cold side charge pipe when on a turbo application but this manifold is fine uh, the con for it for me was it does not use the stock auto air control valve there's not a provision for it and like I said before on the bottom uh, which isn't a big deal now to get it to fit you had to shave down the uh, bottom of the flange See it has the spots on the back for the vacuum all the you know nice stuff whereas the pro series for me is um if i wanted to take this stock b16 manifold port it and make it work as best as it could then you would end up with this so to avoid doing all that you buy this and, you, and you're already there throttle body inlet is already matched to what uh the skunk 2 upgraded throttle bodies would be as far as like the regular cast or billet versions not the big 90 millimeter but if you're going up to 74 whether it's 66 68 70 millimeter this throttle body opening has already been ported open to match so you're and it's a win there um, auto air control valve motor bolts back up if you're in a place that has emissions has to worry about that that's a big deal we don't have emissions here but the other Civic I'm doing um, just going back to Georgia does have emissions and we discussed that a few weeks ago which that was a big deal for him so we're actually going to put the same manifold on his as well but I'll show you these two side by side the factory and the pro series you can see the difference in throttle body opening uh, pro series they moved the IET from first runner to the second runner but outside of that, everything else should bolt back up fine. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and put the fuel rail and all the accessories back on uh, the Pro Series and get it ready to bolt back up. Or I'll show you the matching of the gasket size. I'm using the Gold Eagle intake manifold gasket, which all lines up perfectly fine on here, like I was saying. And also the um, throttle body gasket. Uh, let me line this back up properly and I'll show you.
you can see it's all good as well. So I'll get all this put back up, put back together on the Pro Series and get it stuck back on the car. I'll go ahead and add this in there as well. Show you stock B16 throttle body. This is the um, 66 we're going with on here. 90 millimeter billet skunk tooth throttle body. Again, it's all a flowing together thing. Um, sometimes the deal isn't always a deal. You may have somebody wanting to say, hey, I got this 90 millimeter. I'll sell you at the same price as, you know, this 66. You have to take a look at what you're actually putting it on. This would suck on this particular application. You know, you want to get it all sized right. It's too much throttle body. Uh, it would, the bottom end would be awful. If it was a top end car, drag car, I'm worried about full throttle and moving as much air as possible. And that's all I'm concerned about. This is your winner. But street car, get the size right and you'll be okay. Now I've got this all put back together, ready to go on with the exception of the uh, throttle cable bracket, which is still in the car. Quick tip, the factory um, fuel rail washers and this particular manifold don't go together. Um, I don't know why, but it came out to be a better fit um, to where all the injectors are perfectly square and in the hole, you know, with the same tension. I just used a flat washer below the rail and I put one, you know, beneath the bolt when I tightened it down to get it to fit right. Um, so yeah, when you're putting these together, just exclude the factory washers because they're not going to work. They set the rail too high, which is going to end up in a fuel leak once you actually put it on the car and get it running. So flat washer, tighten it down, you're good to go. Now I get this set back in place, ready to bolt down. Uh, you can see again, I'm using the Golden Eagle um, sandwich plate for the turbo feed, which feeds filtered oil to the turbo, and also our block plug set, which is running over to the catch can. And the Golden Eagle, um, thermal intake manifold and gasket. No. I have to shave the side, bottom side of this intake manifold. Ain't that a bitch? Oh, yeah, I do. It's sitting on the water pipe or the water pump housing water the alternator bracket is what it's hitting on one side. So this one clears the water pipe. And hits the bracket. Okay, you can see the one spot. Didn't take very much. I just knocked it down with uh, the angle grinder. fits perfect now I've got it all bolted back in I went ahead and connected the harness ran the injector plugs like I didn't do last time and while I was in it I went ahead and made the uh, fuel return hose I converted the bottom of the AEM regulator to dash 6 and then just built the hose like I usually do in our fuel kits um, and if you want to know the AEM fuel regulator and the rail are both straight cut dash six so all you have to do is swap the fitting at the bottom of the regulator to a straight cut to a regular dash six male to male and then you can build the hose to go to the bottom of the firewall that's basically it for now i'll get back to it again in a few days um if there's anything else you want to see let me know if you feel like there's something i missed let me know and i'll come back to it and show it and uh, we'll go from there We'll get more to the turbo setup and more plumbing to finish up the end bay fuel lines next time. And yeah, that's it. I appreciate it.